On November 17, 1558, Queen Elizabeth became the royal monarch of England. She was a young woman of 25, and many in her court believed the woman was not capable of leading the island nation. But the 44 years of the Virgin Queen's rule is considered the golden age of English history. We're lucky here tonight to have with us in Morgan Hill's public access TV studio, the great English Queen Elizabeth. Her Royal Majesty is visiting the San Francisco Bay Area to take part in the Northern California Renaissance Fair, which opens at Casa de Fruta on the weekend of September 18th. Thank you so much, Your Royal Majesty, for joining us today. Oh, well, thank you, sir. We are most delighted to be here. Ah. Your rule, your reign was considered the golden age of English history. It was an exciting period of global exploration and also the exploration of great ideas of science and arts. Can you tell us why it was such an exciting period? Well, we were there. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the Tudors, huh? <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, there were many things that were happening during that time. Uh, so Francis Drake circumnavigated the globe. Right, close to right where we are, right here in California. Aye, we did hear that he did land um, by, a, was it Point Reyes? That's right. right. Aye, indeed. And there's um, art and music. We played all different types of... Um, um, uh, ah. Games? Or? Games. I, my, 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 my brain just, uh, ju just left for a moment there. Um, it, it was indeed a, a, a most advantageous time for all different kinds of the arts. Uh, personally, William Shakespeare was bu building his uh, Globe Theatre in London, and we did enjoy his plays, as well as those of Christopher Marlowe, uh, who I have a, a, a soft spot for, uh, and, that, and Ben Johnson, who was a total hack. Mm. Well, what, what would be some of your favorite ben, or, or William Shakespeare plays? Well, we have only seen a few. He is an up-and-coming playwright, mm. and we are most excited to see some of his work. We did see Romeo and Juliet, and The Taming of the Shrew, which was most entertaining. Oh, yeah. And we also did like Hamlet. It was very long, though, but don't tell him that. It's very, four hours, I believe. Uh, yes. And it's kind of a murder mystery, I guess. Who really killed uh, the king? So. Aye. Yeah. It, it, it was very intriguing. Hmm. So, well, you, The time you come from, there was a lot of turmoil, social turmoil, political turmoil, and especially the religious turmoil between the Protestants and the Catholics. Uh, can you tell us why that was such an important part of, I guess, the, the, the times there and what you consider, you know, the, the problems of that age? Well, there were not so much problems when, as when, when we are on the throne. Now, when my sister Mary was ruling, she, of course, was Catholic from the Church of Rome and was very intolerant to others of the Christian faith and would tend to um, set people on fire. And that tends to make people not like you very That's much. That's thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Even in California, we don't do that. <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, now, I do believe in the Reformed faith, in the uh, what we call the Church of England. And personally, as long as people um, are, are good you know, um, parishioners, as you will, that they go to their services of the Church of England every Sunday, and they do not try to commit treason, to uh, harm our person. We do not much care if then they wish to worship um, in their own home hmm. in another form, as long as they are at our so services on if, Sunday. If they are good <laughs> souls and good citizens, you, uh, you don't mind in terms of you know, their practices. So. I indeed. It is treason that we dislike, and we try... Um, we do not think it is, it is a good thing to make windows into men's souls. Hmm. For we do believe there is one God and there is one Jesus, and we are all on the same path towards the same truth. It's just that people are um, going about it in different ways. Hmm. So, tell us a little bit about Mary, queen, when she was the previous queen to you, and your relationship uh, with her. Well, she was my sister. She was my half-sister. Um, we have the same father, different mothers. Um, Mary and I... It was very interesting. Mm. Uh, when we were younger, we were very close, as close as we could be living in different households, but I did see her on occasion, and she was very kind to me. 
However, when she did ascend to th the throne, um, she did find my presence threatening. And the people did love us, and that was threatening to her as well. And all she did want was a husband and children. And unfortunately, the husband she chose, the people did not like, he did not love her, and she was unable to have any children. Oh, she was barren. Uh, yes, she had some, um, what, what you would call uh, tumors. Mm. And um, that prevented her not only from having children, but hastened her death. Mm. And she only ruled for five years. Mm. So it's interesting, you know, here it is, a family, a royal family, and there's the conflict, the Catholic and the Protestant co conflict right there in the, uh, in the very own royal family. So. Yes, um, our, my, our dear brother, Edward, he was Protestant. He was a bit more uh, severe in his views than I am. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is how we were raised. Hmm. And now Edward would tell me that you know, his is the only right way. Hmm. So he died rather young, didn't he? I indeed. He yeah. was called to God when he was 15 uh, years old. So a teenager. So. I indeed. Yeah, so... Tragic for your family, I guess, but uh, it caused you know the the next ascension to the throne. So um, there was an interesting uh, uh, incident in your uh, your period. Uh, the Spanish Armada and the Spain tried to come and conquer England. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Well, um, Philip of Spain actually he was one of my old suitors. Oh, an old boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he wishes. <laughs> He was married to my sister Mary, hmm. and he did. Um, he wanted my hand in marriage after my sister died, which I thought was very inappropriate. Um, however, I was kind to him for diplomacy's sake. Um, when um, I did spurn his advances, I'm afraid that he did not take it very well. Hmm. Um, he, his government was different than our rule, in that. He was a very weak ruler. He was ruled more by his own um, indecision and paranoia than by good counsel and faith in God and his good, his good um, counselors about mm. him. He only had men that would tell him what he wanted to hear. And the yes men, uh, as indeed. we call them in America. So when he did build this armada and sailed it forth to try and conquer England, well, God himself did raise a storm and sink all their ships. We did not have to fight one man. Wow. So that can, should, should tell all the people of, of Philip's, um, Philip's country whose side God is really on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably God saw you guys as the underdog. Here it was a small island nation going against a, a major European power. And that is very true. Our, 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 our island, though small, is very mighty. Hmm. And we may not have the lands and countries of great empires of Europe. However, uh, we are a fighting people. We are a very devout people. And we are, we are an enlightened people. Hmm. Well, I lived a bit in England. I uh, worked there in London for a while, and I also studied in Bath, England. And I definitely saw that they're, the English character. You know, we they're very you know, determined to to win, and we saw that well in our period, the World War II period. Uh, ah. You know, they would not let you know the Germans invade the uh, the English islands. So. Oh. So, but you you probably don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that currently we have some German mercenaries that uh, we pay to uh, work for us. Oh, so. <laughs> You know, it's interesting that the, the Elizabethan period, it was a time of quite a bit of intrigue, I guess, in the government. And there was quite a bit of spying, uh, a lot of um, literally backstabbing. Uh, can you maybe talk about that a bit? Oh, well, that's just the court. Hmm. Is that not how you have in your government now as well? Oh, well, <laughs> it's very similar in many ways, <laughs> uh, although it's more subtle in many ways. I don't think, you know, Congressmen and senators get backstabbed literally quite that bit, but, <laughs> but we have the media for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so Francis Walsingham is our principal secretary, and he does have his own um, spy network, as does uh, Sir William Cecil, Ben Burley, hmm. and our dear Robin, um, the Earl of Leicester. Hmm. It is how they keep abreast of what is happening in Europe. Um, in 
because we do not have your quick way of communicating, news can take weeks. And as Walsingham does say, that knowledge is the ultimate power. Hmm. That trafficking in information, so to speak, is what is the best currency within the court. Knowing what your rivals are up to at any given time and having the most up-to-date information is the best way to safeguard ourselves. Information is power. Ah, so, indeed. Yeah. Um, you, I believe, never got married. So uh, what, was, what was the reason for that? I mean, I'm sure you had many suitors that would love to have taken your hand in marriage. <laughs> but I did have many suitors. Um, Thus far, God has not seemed fit to bring me a husband that is appropriate wow. for me. Um, You're waiting for Mr. Wright, huh? I indeed, <laughs> and I do not think that women should settle. Hmm. And I do agree that it is a woman's job to be married and have children, and especially as a monarch, to, prov to provide an heir. To keep the line going. I indeed. However, I need to marry a man who will bring with him something that um, you know, p lands power for England, not just to marry anyone for any reason. And because I am a queen, I am not able to marry someone just because I love them. Hmm. Love is not a concept in marriage with political figures. Interesting. So, Kind of a, kind of a sad note. I mean, if you did fall in love, but it's not the right person, that, that would be kind of a hard thing to, for you, I guess. So. Yes, it, it would be very hard. Yeah, so. Let's talk about maybe women in, in the Elizabethan age. Uh, how, you know, how would you view women you know, in terms of their relationship with the society, and particularly maybe yourself as a, a monarch who is a woman? Well, in our society, we have what we call the great chain of being. And everyone is very happy knowing that they have their place in this great chain. For example, there is God, and then there are the angels. Then there is myself. Hmm. For God has called me to this position, and it is not a position that women would normally be called to. But because my um, dear departed brother um, died at such an early age, then it was God's plan that my sister Mary and myself would succeed our goodly father. Now, um, after that would be men, and then women underneath men. Um, women in England do have some more um, rights, as you would say, than on the continent. There is a saying that, that England is um, heaven for women and hell for horses. Oh. <laughs> and that is because women are valued more highly than horses, and horses are very valuable. Oh, yeah. And especially in, in Europe, they do not understand this, for men do value their horses above their women. Hmm. And while women can own property here, um, they are still subject to their husbands as, you know, as is proper. Yeah. So kind of a patriarchal uh, view of, of society. Also a very class-conscious kind of society. Everybody has their place, and probably you cannot go beyond that or underneath that. So. Well, it is a very class society. There are times when people are elevated um, by their good deeds, by um, bravery in battle, to a higher station. I myself did um, raise um, Sir Robert Dudley to the, Earl of, to the title of the Earl of Leicester. Ah. And I do give an incredible amount of faith in him and in his good deeds. Although most people do not agree with us. Mm. Oh, what, why is that? <laughs> they, they tend, if you believe this, hmm. to think just because our father had um, his, his grandfather executed as a traitor. Hmm. Well, then there was his, other, his father and his brother. Oh. <laughs> but just because... He had a brother and a father and a grandfather executed as traitors does not mean that Sir Robert Dudley, who is a very fine man, would ever be a traitor. He is our most loyal subject. Hmm. I see a lot of fondness uh, for, you, for him through you. So. Aye, indeed. Yeah. This, uh, you mentioned your father quite a few times. Your father was King Henry VIII? Yes. So, uh, did you know him well? I mean, was, was, what was your relationship like? Um, 
royal children are not um, raised with their parents. Hmm. I did have my own ho household. I was at Hatfield House for the majority of my childhood. I did see my mother on occasion. Anne Boleyn? I indeed. And um, my blessed mother, she took very good care of me and sent me many pretty things. After my mother's downfall, my father did not see me much. Hmm. I was accepted back into court when I was in my early teen years. My father was a, a paragon. He was the great Harry. Oh, yeah. He was more a god to me as a small child mm -hmm. and uh, such a, a grand and glorious figure. And I did idolize him, but how I, I did not know him very well. I guess, you know, he, in many ways he was a legend. He was the uh, English Hercules in many ways, you know, in terms of the power and personality that he had. So. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about maybe your early education uh, in terms of the court. You know, what, how were you, uh, you were educated? Well, I had many tutors. Um, my brother's tutors um, became um, my own. I had a three or four. Hmm. Um, they were skilled in um, the new religion, as you would say, the Protestant faith. And they taught me Latin. I can read and speak in uh, many different languages. And um, in uh, geology, geometry, um, literature, um, translating uh, manuscripts hmm. from the Greek, I had a, a very classical education and an education that was that befits um, a prince. Hmm. Well, you mentioned your tutors. Uh, you don't know this, but one of my early, I guess, ancestors was Sir John Cheek. Oh, C H E K E. <laughs> Yes. And he, he instructed you and, I believe, Edward and maybe Mary on uh, Greek and Latin. So, uh, so we do have a kind of a bond here, you know, through an, uh, an ancestor that we have. And there's a saying that maybe um, Sir John Cheek was the uh, uh, inspiration to William Shakespeare for the uh, Twelfth Night character, Sir John Ague Cheek. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm a little embarrassed to say that, knowing the character <laughs> and his drinking habits. So... so. Let's see, um, you were a patron of the arts. Let's maybe talk a little bit more about the arts because I think that was a critical part of, of the uh, Elizabethan society was uh, how, how the uh, arts brought people together. Well, indeed, um, especially living in England as we do in the winter, there are, are not many um, hours of daylight and you have to entertain yourself somehow. Oh, yeah. um, in the playhouses, but also in the court, we would have pageants that we would construct for our own amusement. Hmm. In fact, the Earl of Leicester constructed a, 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 a lake. He made a, a man-made lake and hmm. filled it with mermaids and Triton with his trident. And wow. It was, um, pageantry was um, very important to us. And not only because we were able to utilize this as a teaching tool, because we would do pageants about um, the Greek gods, the uh, Greek writers, uh, the Roman um, mythology. mythology, and all of those very interesting things from very long ago. Um, pagans, though they were, they, it was most amusing. Well, I believe William Shakespeare <laughs> and many of the other um, playwrights were inspired by the, uh, the Greeks and the Romans. So. Yes, they had a, an incredible system of government and architecture, which we liberally use. Hmm. Uh, we enjoy we, we enjoy our diversions very much. Oh, and also sp sports, hunting and archery and bear baiting. We like bear baiting very uh, much. That's part of the California tradition. Back in the Spanish time, they had bull, bulls and bears uh, fighting each other. So, so we have some commonality yeah. there. And in fact, we have a, kind of a commonality in terms of our entertainment. We have a mass entertainment called movies which is sort of our version of the Elizabethan theaters, although it's portrayed on a screen. Um, are you familiar with, with films and movies? I have heard tell of them, they, that they interest me greatly. Yeah. Well, there's uh, one called, uh, movie called Shakespeare in Love, oh. which uh, is about Shakespeare's romantic uh, experience and how it inspired him to write Romeo and Juliet. But uh, it's, oh, a, it's an exciting type of uh, art form that we have. 
And here in Morgan Hill, we actually have a festival devoted to short films, short movie films, called the Poppy Jasper Film Festival. And if you're here on November 12th, 13th, and 14th this year, I really encourage you to enjoy some of the short films that we have. So. That sounds most entertaining. But let's go to uh, why you're here in California, the Northern California Renaissance Fair. Can you maybe talk about that a little bit and why it's such a fun thing for, for us to come go to? Well, there are many entertainers, and especially in these days and times, I know that things are very hard. And people need some diversion. They need to be able to get away from, you know, from the troubles that they are having in life and have some fun. And there at the, at the Northern California Renaissance Fair, you can see jousting and you can see wonderful shows. You can go shopping. They have things that are very affordable as well as some things that are, oh, very exquisite, like jewelry. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> There are costume entertainers throughout the streets. It is like, as someone had told me, it is like going back in time. Hmm. Well, I've been there for several, uh, for several fairs, and it indeed is like going back in time. You step into the, the village that they have. I think it's called Williamton. Or Will Willington. Willington. And uh, all the people who are wearing char character costumes and performing and the pageantry. Uh, it's a beautiful festival. Would you say it's appropriate to take children to? In absolutely. If there is a show that is not appropriate for children, they have them all on one stage. That is the NC-17 stage. But all the other shows are appropriate for little ones. And in fact, every single day of the fair this year, children 12 and under get in for free. Oh, wow. What a deal. Yes. Uh -huh. Tell, tell me who, what characters or what historic people will be maybe at the, uh, the fair. Well, Robert Dudley, the Earl of oh. Leicester, <laughs> will be there. And Sir Walter Raleigh. Oh, oh let us... Um, Sir Walter we'll, Raleigh, he was the guy that basically put the coat on the, uh, on the mud puddle for you? I think that he made that up just to give himself some good press. Oh. <laughs> Though... He was very nice and did buy me a lovely bauble last year. Ah. Uh, let's see, who else? Well, of course, there's, there's Master Shakespeare. Mm. And there's Sir Francis Drake and his crew. The famous captain. Aye, and then there are the, um, the village um, characters that you will see as well. Um, Lady Phoebe, who has had more husbands than I change my socks. Oh, wow. And they're all dead. I wonder what Is happened. Is she the Jaja Gabor of the Elizabethan <laughs> era? <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Um, the, the mayor's wife and the evil sheriff. Mm. Uh, there, are, there are many different people to interact with uh, at the fair. So, what uh, maybe other uh, foods that we can eat there that from the era and, and other things like that? Oh, they have lovely chicken. My personal favorites, there's this fruited ice that is in many different flavors and it comes in half of a fruit and you can actually eat the bowl. Hmm. So it's like a little half of a, of a peach with peach ice in it and then you can eat the peach. Hmm. It's lovely. D delicious. Is that from the era, of the Elizabethan era? The Italians brought ah. that to us. Um, they are very, the Italians love their shaved ice and their gelato. We do have some gelato. Mm. The pear is lovely. Um, also, they have little pies, not the fruit pies, but the savory pies. Oh, yeah. A steak and mushroom or shepherd's pie. Yeah. So. The, those, those are very good. And a banger. Oh, yeah. It, <laughs> What's an English tr uh, village without a banger? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a sausage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk maybe about Elizabethan time and what America can uh, learn from that period. Uh, it's a, it, it was an interesting period of of history and, and it affects us today deeply. What may be uh, lessons that we can learn from the Elizabethan era? Well, I would say to, to slow down. Hmm. Everyone here is so quick, 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 quick. Enjoy life. The people in, our, in, in my time appreciate what they have. They, even if it is something small, they take joy out of their families and the, and the simple things in life. You know, working with the land, going for a walk. They also enjoy you know, 
seeing live theater and actors actually performing for their entertainment. Mm -hmm. So we in America can basically learn a little bit about, you know, slowing down and finding the pleasures in the simple things. Ah, indeed. Yeah, so. I think it would do us all a lot of good. Yeah. Well, I think one of the simple things is to go to the Northern California Re Renaissance Fair and maybe get an appreciation for a different society and a different time and in a different place. And I really appreciate you coming, Your Royal Majesty, to our studio here and telling us about the Northern California Renaissance Fair. Well, I'm most pleased that you had us here. So, thank you very much, Your Royal Majesty. Thank you.